Hey y'all, Big Tim here. Thanks for tuning in for the 11th edition of the Truth Behind the Trophy series. This one's a little out of order. We're going back to 2012. Now we had already talked and you saw the episode from Maysville, Kentucky, where I won the state championship. Well, that allowed me to be on the Kentucky state team at the Bass Master Southern Divisional uh, for Bass Nation. Now, the Southern Division was Lake Okeechobee, so we're all really super excited to get there, right? You know, it's a dream destination. You know, the the Kentucky Bass Nation pays for your for your lodging and a lot of other things in between. Um, so we're all just super excited. You know, I get to go to this, um, you know, my good friend Joey and uh, another one of my good friends, Richie. You know, have heard his name on here quite a few times. We all get to go to the Bass Nation Southern Original and it's at Okeechobee. We're all roomed together. We're excited about that. So, you know, it's a long drive down. We're having a good time, expecting the greatest. And like I've told you before, my biggest personal best fish is six and a quarter pounds. And I'm thinking, here I am going to Okeechobee. I'm going to be able to break this. Well, not so much. Well, Okeechobee was a little different than what we had been watching. You know, we had just watched all the you know, the, the Brandon McMillan deals, the Randall Tharp tournaments from FLW, and we're all just super excited about it, but it was a little different. Um, you know, these fish are mostly post-spawn and um, a little bit more difficult to catch because it's April, I want to say early April, and um, they're acting a little differently than those tournaments which were held in January. January is generally the prime spawn time down at Okeechobee. So April, things are a little different. In fact, on a couple of days of practice, I really didn't come up with anything. Um, I'd cast it a lot, didn't really catch anything but small fish, and um, was feeling pretty discouraged. And for some reason, I was running the rim canal, which you, the rim canal basically goes all the way around Okeechobee, and it's a safe way to go because some of Okeechobee, you know, can get pretty shallow and get pretty hairy. In fact, I'd actually hired a guide just to show me how to get around the lake. And uh, he showed me how to get over one good spot and get back if there was a bad wind. Um, but that was a little too far away from me. Uh, he showed me how to get over to South Bay, which I did run over there one or two days in practice. And, uh, and there was a Great big flotilla over there because that happened to be where Ish Monroe was winning the Bassmaster Elite Series tournament. So that was another reason I wanted to kind of stay away from there. But, you know, I learned from him a lot about the lake, a lot about, uh, you know, maneuvering through the rim canal and and they call it the rim ditch down there. Kind of neat. Um, so I'd been, you know, in a lot of different places on the lake. Now, where I hadn't been was the north end. Um Figured, you know, it's April, all those north end fish probably are, you know, done their thing and maybe even moved up into the river. Now, back in 2012, the state team consisted of 12 members, six boaters and six non-boaters. So it was a good idea, and I still think it's a good idea, for as many non-boaters to go with as many different people as they possibly can. Uh, that way you don't get a team that, that want to keep secrets amongst themselves. So... The only day that Joey and I got to fish together was the last day. And um, we went out and was running some areas and really hadn't done very well at all. And I uh, had a chatterbait on and kind of saw these rock transitions in the rim canal where the rock was going from bigger rock down to small rock. And um, I caught a couple fish on them. I would just run along and find these little transitional banks. And sometimes I would pause just long enough for Joey to run up the front deck, make a couple casts, and if he caught a fish, I, I, I kind of solidified my pattern. Now granted, they weren't big fish, but I figured I could at least come away with 12, 13, if I got lucky, maybe 15 pounds. So it, in my mind, at least it was something. You know, I, I couldn't get anything going in lily pads or, or canes or any of the gator grass, any of that. So that was my game plan. So on the first day of the tournament, man, I'm fired up. That's what I'm going to do. I draw a really young fella from, from Florida. I think he was just 16. You know, he was just old enough to be eligible. 
uh, Stone High School, and really good kid. But um, I ran some of my rock patterns and came up to the first one, and it was real close to close to where we went out of, and uh, didn't catch one. Ran the next one, didn't catch one. And I was like, uh oh, here we go. So then the next thing they have is these little, they look like dams. Um, they're, you know, sucking and releasing water for irrigation. And there's always current flow through there. Um, so I stopped, there's, it makes little points. It looks like a, a creek point. So I stopped on one of the points, filled that black and blue chatterbait in there. Bam, got one. Now at the time I thought it was maybe four and a half pounds. Throw it in a live well. Well, this is pretty awesome. I keep running my banks, my transition banks, and it's still not happen until I come up to the next, whatever they call those, water flow stations, something like that. And it's sure enough, as I get on a point, bam, I catch a small one. On the far point, bam, catch another. I'm thinking four pounds. So I feel like this is pretty good. Now, meanwhile, this is a shared boat event. And this young man, I want to make sure that he feels like he's got every opportunity. I asked him if there's any place he wants to go. And he wanted to go up on the north end, and I'm not familiar with it at all. So when I get up there, uh, I said, so where do you want to go? He says, you know, nothing really looks familiar. Um, we really kind of wasted time. I, I think he was just a little spun out. I don't think he was expecting me to give him the opportunity to go where he wanted. And... Uh, then wherever he wanted to go, he wasn't real familiar with. He couldn't get there, basically. Um, so we spent a little time up there and tried to come back and run my rock pattern. So I'm running my little rock pattern, and uh, nothing's really coming of it. And um, it was just pretty brutal there for a little while. And um, we weren't getting anything accomplished, so we went up to flip some reeds for a little while. And... Uh, Really couldn't get much going there. I did end up with four fish for the day. Not what I wanted. You know, obviously you want five. But I was surprised by my weight. Turned to find out those those Florida bass, they are bigger than what they look. You know, there's so much more muscle. They're a little darker. They're longer and thinner. The two that I thought, thought were four pounds were six pounds. I had two six-pounders and then two one-pounders. I ended the day with 14 pounds. So here's this picture. So the second day of the tournament, man, am I fired up. I'm thinking I can really get something going here. I've got an understanding. I know what to do. And, um, and I ran all the little water discharge areas. Nothing on any of the points. I'd actually had used Google Maps the night before and tried to map out all the locations of where they were and uh, couldn't get anything on any of them. The conditions had changed, even though really couldn't notice a difference in the sky or anything. Something had changed. So the guy I was with said he had a couple places where we could go, go flip. So we went flipping. Now, I did manage to come up with a limit. I had a whopping five fish for seven pounds. But, you know, as Dad always says, it's better than a sharp stick in the eye. Well, I guess that's definitely true. So after the second day, it's kind of getting narrowed in. And, you know, the, the guys that are in the lead are starting to break out. And I'm right there in the middle of the pack. And um, we're going out for dinner that night as a team. And, you know, we may uh, go out and have dinner and indulge in a few adult beverages. And I may have had more than my share. Uh, I was a little aggravated that I wasn't doing better. Um, don't get me wrong. I was having a really good time. But in my mind, I was still a little aggravated that I wasn't doing any better. Um, but yeah, had uh, a few too many. And uh, like I said, had a really good time. I remember Lori had to pull me away because I was almost at a point of doing karaoke. And then when that happens, that's almost an all-night thing. But she pulled me away, got me to bed, and uh, woke up with a different attitude the next day. I, I really kind of woke up with the attitude that, you know, I'm here. You know, there's not many people who can say that. I'm enjoying myself. Um, I seem to have a really cool partner the next day. 
So let's just go out and have fun. And uh, Ricky, the guy that was leading for the Kentucky team, had invited me up to some lily pads. I said, dude, I can't catch them in lily pads. And he said, well, there's some up by me. If you want to come up, um, you won't interfere with me. Come on up and uh, we'll see what happens. So I took his advice and started running up. And before I got up to his area where his lily pads were, I found another lily pad field. Now, this was a lot more sparse, which suited me a little better. And uh, my co-angler, who I believe was from Georgia, not 100% certain, but uh, he really knew how to throw a frog. So we both had frogs on, and he started whooping my butt with a frog. You know, I couldn't hook up with them. Uh, they weren't eating mine like they were his. I mean, every one that came up and got his was just devouring it. And I remember his frog was a little different. He had a couple contrasting uh, strands in a skirt. That made a big difference for him, I think. So I just was throwing a spinnerbait. I caught a couple. And then all of a sudden, the fish just quit biting. I guess it was about 10 o'clock in the morning. There was no blow-ups in the lily pads and nothing like that. So we just sat there in the boat together and talked about it. So, well, we got two options. Those fish either moved up into the reeds or they moved back behind us into open water. In which case, how are we going to catch them out there in open water? So we opted to go up to the reeds. And uh, if you ever go to Florida, you obviously know you're going to need some breaking line on heavy flipping stick. So that's what I had. I had, uh, I think, an ounce and a quarter weight, a couple full-size 420 beavers. I think I was actually using kinky beavers and hematoma. And the first reed that I flipped into, man, it just went, don't, just wanted to pull the rod out of my hand. I actually thought I had an alligator. And when I set the hook, bam, it was a four pounder. And I swung that sucker right in the boat, unhooked it, threw it in a live well. Pretty excited, man. I've got two fish now. One of them's like pound and a half. And then I've got this four. So then we keep fishing around here, and then I find a little, I don't want to call it a canal. It's more of a ditch. It was only about eight feet wide, just barely enough to get the boat through. Um, and we started going, working our way up to there and through it. And before I got the tail end of the boat past the mouth of that little canal, I had a good limit. I had... Um, Five fish that went 22 pounds. My best limit that I'd ever caught to this day still. Um, you know, you don't really get an opportunity to catch 22 pounds here on the river and some of the other places that I fish. But that was my biggest limit to, to then and to now, really, 22 pounds. My co-angler had a limit mostly on the frog. He didn't do so well with the flipping business. Uh, he kind of struggled with that. But he had a nice limit, too. I think he had 24 pounds mostly on the frog. So when we go back to weigh in, I mean, I'm excited. I know I've got 20 pounds. I don't know that I've got 22, but I do know I've got 20. Um, I don't think I've made a dent in it because Ricky was pretty far ahead of me. And um, I get up there and I'm parked next to one of my other buddies in the Bass Nation. And he's joking um, about how he was catching them. And I finally said, what did you catch? And he said, 27 pounds. I looked at him, I said, there is no way you caught 27 pounds. He was actually with the tournament leader uh, at the time. And um, sure enough, he did have 27. And uh, he was making fun of me because I didn't believe him. I said, well, you, he's one of these guys that's always giving me the business anyway. Yeah, we do it together. So I really didn't think he had 27, but he did. And he really caught him. He did well, did great, phenomenal. Um, and then of course we had Ricky and Ricky had to sit and wait till just about everybody had weighed in because since he was leading for Kentucky, they like to build the drama there. So I knew what I had. And then I'm waiting for Carl who had the 27 pound bag to weigh in. And I just barely beat Carl because I had like the one day where I caught seven pounds made a big difference. And then it finally came down to it, and I just barely edged Ricky out. And I took the number one spot for Kentucky. That's what gave me the opportunity to go on to the Bass Nation 
National Championship. Be sure to tune in next week and find out the conclusion where we end up going to the National Championship at Lake Wheeler. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you then.